Okay, our next instalment of our journey across the wilderness towards the promised land. So those children of Israel had been slaves um, and God had uh, led them out uh, using Moses they, and he'd opened up a pathway through the Red Sea and as they came across through that Red Sea, do you remember they'd sung and they said, who's like you, O Lord among the gods, who is like you? And then God led them out with that pillar of fire and there were many difficulties on the way and there was a lot of complaining, uh, but God had turned bitter waters sweet. He had um, caused them to eat angels food and given them manna from heaven um, he had led them out through that wilderness and he'd provided water um, out of a rock and then he led them down didn't he to Mount Sinai where Moses uh, went up into the mountain as as God came down and the earth shook as God descended onto that mountain um, and for 40 days Moses was up there and he received those 10 commandments which God himself wrote on the tablets of stone. But the people down at the bottom of the mountain got tired of waiting for Moses um, and all the way through they'd been complaining and they were really complaining now and so they persuaded Aaron to make them a golden calf, a statue. They made it from their earrings um, and he created this idol and they worshipped it and they said, you O calf, you, you're our God now, you led us out of Egypt. And up on the mountain where Moses still was, God said to him, the people have turned away quickly. God said, I'm angry with the people. I'm going to destroy the people and I'm going to make you, Moses, into a great nation. And Moses falls on his face before God and he says no. And he presents his arguments to God. And incredibly, God changes his mind because of Moses' prayer. And then Moses comes down the mountain and he can hear singing down in the camp and he knows that the people are worshipping this idol and he takes the tablets of stone and he doesn't think the people are worthy to have them and he smashes them and breaks them and then he takes the golden calf and he breaks it up and they grind it down into a powder and he puts it in water and he makes the people drink it. And many people died that day and many people became ill from a plague. It was a sad day for Israel. But the Bible tells us uh, that when Moses was up on that mountain for those 40 days, he hadn't just given Moses those 10 commandments. He'd spoken to Moses about something else as well. He'd revealed something else to Moses. He'd shown him something. And that was, he'd spoken to Moses and he said to him, the people must make me a sacred tent. That means a special, a holy tent. The people must make me a sacred tent. The Bible calls it a tabernacle. Why would God want a sacred tent? Why would he ask Moses to do this? And he tells Moses, because I want to come and live among the people. And God had shown Moses that he had a plan to come down and actually live among the children of Israel. And nothing like this had ever happened on earth since Adam and Eve had been thrown out of that Garden of Eden. Since sin had separated the people from God. Who, who had ever heard of such a thing? Remember what God had said to Moses at the beginning, I'm going to come down. And when he came down at the Red Sea, the Red Sea ran from his presence. When he came down onto that mountain, the whole earth shook. And now he says to Moses, I'm going to come down and actually live among the people. And what's more, God says to Moses, I'm going to meet you in this sacred tent. How amazing. This was going to be called the tent of meeting. There I'll meet with you. That's what God says. So what was this sacred tent going to look like and what was going to be in it? We know that it was going to sit in the middle of the camp and that around it would be a kind of courtyard. Here's a picture of it. There's the courtyard bit around it and there in the middle you can see it is the special tent. And it had various sections in it and in it were going to be kept sacred, holy treasures. Here's a little diagram of it. Do you see that? The bit around the outside is like the courtyard and then the oblong in the middle, that's the sacred tent and it's that sacred tent's broken into two bits, isn't it? It's got a bit that's called the holy place, that's about two thirds of it, and then a tiny little bit called the holy of holies. And so um, we've got some amazing pictures here. When you came in through that courtyard, the first thing you'd see is this incredible altar of burnt offering where they were offering up these sacrifices to God. Here's a picture of the priests offering up those sacrifices and behind them is the entrance to the tent. But before they go into the tent, they had to wash in this 
um, huge kind of basin of water they had to wash themselves and then when they went into the tent you can see it's called the, the holy place this is the bit that's two-thirds of it and there were three special things in there an incredible golden candlestick I think you can just see that and a table that had bread on it special bread and then you can see the high priest there in his beautiful garments and he's offering up incense this beautiful incense they would burn it day and night this incense would be rising up to God and then if he was to turn and pull back that purple curtain behind him he would go into the most holy place the holy of holies and there was only one thing in this bit it was a golden box it was called the ark of the covenant and inside this golden box were the ten commandments the two tablets of stone and here in this most holy place, God said to Moses, I will meet you there between the angels. Can you see those angels there? And the sacred tent and its courtyard would stand in the middle of the vast camp. Remember, there were hundreds of thousands of people out there. They, and this tent and the courtyard would be in the middle of them. All of this God showed to Moses up on that mountain. But how could they build it? What were they going to build it with? They were just people in the middle of the wilderness. They just got their animals and their, and their stuff with them. They, they hadn't got stuff, had they? Do you remember what had happened? They had plundered the Egyptians. On that day before they left, the Egyptians, God had given them favor with the Egyptians and the Egyptians had given them gold and silver and beautiful material and jewels. That wasn't just for them. God had got a plan for all that stuff. He was going to build his sacred tent with it. And so Moses told the people about this and they began to come and they began to offer their things to God. God had told them to bring blue, purple and red material, animal skins, leather, oil, spices, incense, jewels, gold, silver and bronze. And the Bible says amazingly that the people wanted to give. They gave willingly. They'd given their golden earrings, do you remember, to make that calf. But now they were giving all their things to God. It's estimated that it took eight times tons you may not know what a ton is but it's a lot eight tons of gold silver and bronze to make this tabernacle and day after day the people came many of the women came the children came imagine if you'd been in Egypt and you'd been given some beautiful gold bangle with sapphires in it and you loved it and you thought wow in all my life I might never ever have something like this again shall I give it for the tabernacle shall I keep it they had to decide and the Bible says they willingly gave. We too have to decide, don't we, what we're going to give to God. Our time, our love, our money. This time the people did something right, didn't they? They gave and they gave. In fact, they gave so much that in the end, the people who were trying to build the tabernacle went to Moses and said, the people are giving so much that we're spending all our time just collecting up their things and, and they're coming to us all the time and we don't even have time to build this tabernacle. Um, and so Moses sent a message through the camp and he said, we've got enough. You can stop giving now. Can you imagine how happy Moses was on that day? A famous English evangelist called Smith Wigglesworth said this, the Holy Spirit will only come where a place is prepared for him. What if they'd never built the tabernacle? Would God have come down into the camp of Israel? No way. He had to come to a place that was prepared for him. And so they began to build and there were certain men who God gave incredible skill and they built these beautiful, beautiful things and then they built the tent. This is a bit what it would have looked like if you pulled back the coverings. It had these great big coverings over it. If you pulled them back, this is what it would have looked like. And all these things, they made it. Here's a, they made them. Here's this wonderful picture of the golden lampstand. So beautiful. And once it had all been made, God said to Moses, you are going to put it all together. And he must have had people helping him, but he was in charge. And he began to put it all together. And finally, he puts those, those tablets of stone into the golden box. And he sets up the sacred tent in the middle of the vast camp of the children of Israel. And the Bible says to us in Exodus 40 that as soon as Moses had finished setting it up, God's presence fell onto that sacred tent. One of the versions says the dazzling light of the Lord's presence shone, so much so that he, Moses couldn't actually get into the tent. 
what an amazing thing can you imagine that as a child um, if you were in that great camp and at night you'd look out across towards the sacred tent and you would have seen that fiery pillar above that tent and you would have known that God was there the Bible teaches us that these things that happened in the Old Testament were were shadows of the real thing that was going to happen in the New Testament and so Jesus was given this incredible name Emmanuel so how does God live among his people now well Jesus was the answer Jesus was the way for this the Bible tells us that Jesus came to take away the sins of the world so that the most holy God could come and live within and among the people who believed in Jesus offered their lives to him he doesn't live anymore does he in sacred tents and in temples but he lives in people's hearts the Bible tells the Christians you you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will make my home with them and I will live among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. One of the last things that Jesus says in the Bible is recorded in Revelation chapter 3. And Jesus himself says this, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. He is standing at the door of people's hearts. He's waiting for them to open the door. The Bible says, swing wide the gates, open the ancient doors so that the glorious king may come in. And can you see in this beautiful, beautiful picture that we have of Jesus, the light of the world standing there, do you see he's carrying in his hand a lantern? And it shows that our lives and our hearts are in darkness until Jesus, this shining, dazzling light of the world comes into our hearts he wants our hearts as his sacred tent now wow lord we we worship you living god holy one who came down into that camp of israel lord we want to know you and your light shining in our hearts lord we want you filling our lives. We want to be your sacred tent, Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay. We have our three quick quiz questions. What was this special sacred tent called? That's the first question, and I'm not sure I actually said the name. What was this special sacred tent called? You might have to ask someone this. How many tons, second question, of gold, silver and bronze were used to make the sacred tent? And third question, what was the most holy place? What was in the most holy place? What was in the holy of holies? Here's the answers. The special sacred tent was called the tabernacle. It took eight tons of gold, silver and bronze to make it. And in the most holy place stood the golden box which was known as the Ark of the Covenant. I hope that you got them all right again. <laughs>